In the previous lesson, you learned how to choose your focus point. Now I'm going to give you a little more information on focus points. Here is a piece of information that might sound very technical at first sight, but it is critical for getting more images and focus. Many cameras have different types of focus sensors. There are line type sensors and the more accurate and faster cross type sensors. I can't get into more detail which camera has how many cross type sensors and where they are placed, but as an example, the currently popular entry level Nikon D3500 has 11 focus points. And only the middle focus point is a cross type sensor. Especially for moving subjects or if you have difficulties obtaining focus, limit yourself to the cross type sensors to get a higher percentage of images in focus. Sometimes that means you have to use a focus point that is not actually perfect composition wise. I'll introduce you to two workarounds in the next video. So much for those single focus points, but do you always have to choose a single focus point? No. Particularly for moving subjects, many cameras, especially the ones with more focus points, have other options, like zones. Zones are practical for cameras with more focus points because you can limit the active focus points to those within a certain area of your frame. When you set your focus area to a zone, the camera will usually focus to the nearest subject within that zone. But some cameras have even more sophisticated focus options, like face detection. This super awesome feature will detect the nearest face in your frame and focus on it. Usually, if it detects a face, it will see a square around it. But it gets even better than that. Some cameras have additional eye detection, focusing on the closest eye in your frame. Now, what you need to know in this regard is that some DSLR cameras only offer these awesome features when shooting in so-called live view mode. For those cameras, that means focus functions like Face detection or eye detection will not work when you look through your optical viewfinder. You have to switch to live view and use your display instead. Mirrorless cameras, on the other hand, offer this function also when viewing through the viewfinder, because the viewfinder is digital just like the display. So you once again see knowing your camera and its possibilities will help you get the most out of your photography tools. If your camera supports face detection and it works reliably, it can be of big help because then you can better concentrate on composition. Coming back to the cross type focus sensors I mentioned in the beginning, they are hugely important when it comes to the next major focus aspect. Is your subject moving or is it stationary? Why is that important? Your camera usually has three different modes when it comes to the method it focuses subjects. One of them is an automatic mode, which I would not recommend, so let's concentrate on the other two. The first one is AFS. Unfortunately, every manufacturer gives it a different name, like single servo autofocus on Nikon camera, one shot autofocus on Canon cameras, and single shot autofocus on Sony cameras, to name a few. Basically what it does is it focuses once when you half press the shutter button and keeps the focus until you press the shutter button full. AFS creates the most consecutive results if your subject is not moving. Now let's see what happens if you use AFS and your subject is moving. Your camera will focus and keep the focus on the spot. Your subject doesn't stay on that spot and keeps moving closer. If you now press the shutter button full, you will get an image that is out of focus. So to keep a moving subject in focus, we have to switch to a different focus mode, the so-called AFC. Again, manufacturers have different names for it. Nikon calls it continuous server autofocus. Canon calls it AI server autofocus. Luckily, at least Sony gives it a clear descriptive name and calls it continuous autofocus. And that's what it actually is, a continuous autofocus. The camera continuously tries to keep the chosen subject in focus. Let's see a real life example again. Our subject is moving towards us, the camera continuously keeps the subject in focus and we get a series of focused images. That's super handy, isn't it? So why don't we use AFC all the time? Because AFS creates more reliable results for non-moving subjects. So before you photograph a subject, consider whether it will move or not and choose the right focus mode. 
let's take a break and practice choosing various focus modes or focus points and check if your camera supports face detection or eye detection before we continue to the next video. If this video was helpful for you, please help us rank higher in YouTube searches by subscribing, leaving a comment or simply spreading the word.